When it comes to camera releases in 2023, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 has been a game changer, but there are a few things that need to be fixed. So hey DJI, please, please fix these. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Darren. I'm an outdoor photographer. I'm based here in Ireland. And last year, probably on the day that it was released, I was one of the first people to click buy on the new DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And it is a phenomenal camera. It has been excellent in regards to opening my eyes and opening up opportunities from a video point of view. But there are a couple of things that need to be resolved. Now I say this in a way that they're to make it Better. They're not going to be something that's going to fix a big problem, but they are a problem. They're more of an annoyance than a problem, but they're things that could make this the best camera from a content creator's point of view out there. And that's what I want to go through today. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I kind of want to break them down in between a mixture of two, hardware and software. Hardware, I know, is going to be difficult to be able to fix. Software, hopefully, should be pretty straightforward for the likes of DJI to fix. And the first issue that I encountered, and people messaged me actually, because I did a number of videos when I first received the camera, going through the walkthrough on the settings and such like that. And if you haven't seen those, actually, I'll link to those here. But what I want to kind of go through is the hardware ones that people had messaged me on. And the first one was about the SD card. It is extremely difficult to get the SD card in and out. Even with long nails, and I don't have long nails, to be able to get in and out, it's a difficulty. So the only way I can get it out is to take another smaller micro SD and push that then into the holder and that pops out the other card. And it's the same thing actually when I want to put it in. When I first got it, I thought, okay, there's a fault here. Because normally, you know, DJI are quite good at fitting everything into a small space. But even on the Osmo Pocket, which I still have, I had no issue in getting the SD card in and out. But on the Osmo Pocket 3, it does seem to be an issue. So I'm not sure if that's one that can be fixed quite quickly, but it is a challenge. The other one is in regards to this fantastic gimbal that's on this camera. Now, the field of motion is not 360 degrees. I think it's around about 270 degrees. And what I've found is that when I'm setting it up to be able to track me, if I walk in a certain direction, it stops and it loses me. And then that renders it ineffective. And moreover, I haven't realized this because I've walked out of shot instead of it actually following me. So I think the way it works is that when the camera is pointing towards you here, the distance to go to this side doesn't necessarily work, whereas it goes on the opposite direction all the way back around. Small thing, you have to learn to be able to use it, but why can't they have it to go complete 360? I don't know. Now, to get onto the software challenges, and this is something again like first world pains, but it can be quite annoying, is that when you use the creator combo, and if you're buying this, buy it with the creator combo because you get this microphone as well, which is a fantastic microphone, uh, and you also get on the case, it holds onto the case here. But when you connect on this microphone, what it does is it gives you a message that displays on the screen, and it's a very small screen as it is, but it displays on the screen and it stays there too long. It's over eight seconds that it stays there to tell you that the mic has been connected. In the meanwhile, I can't then frame myself up and I have to wait for that to go away or swipe it away. So it's a small thing, but I think it could be fixed relatively easily. Maybe a small like on the top right hand corner or it flashes and says in smaller real estate on the screen that your mic has been connected or it doesn't stay there for the eight seconds. But it's quite annoying and it's something I think that should be and could be easily fixed. Now, the features and the settings on this camera are phenomenal. However, you can't do active track in low light mode. And I don't know why, because I mean, if it's going to active track and it can see your face, it's going to be able to brighten it up anyway as it is. But it's mostly when I would need to use it if it's in the morning, I don't know if it's going to track me or not. So it's something hopefully that they should be able to fix in a very, very quick form is to give active track in low light mode. Now there's one thing that really annoys me actually, and there is a setting on this that you can change what this button here will do, is that it'll either go into zoom or it will go to move the gimbal. And it always seems to default back to zoom for some reason, even though I have the setting ticked here for it to go and use the gimbal movement, it automatically goes back into zoom. So when I set up my uh, face within the screen, and if I want to adjust that up, 
it will start zooming in. So I have to then hit that button to change it to go back into the other format. Again, a small thing, but easily fixed, I think. And even with that setting, for some reason, it keeps defaulting back to that. Now the active track on this, I think it's active track 6.0. It is phenomenally good. However, it has missed. And I've seen a number of times in, on recent videos that even when I'm trying to do a walk into a screen, it will start, but then it will just lose me. And I'm relatively bright, I suppose, within the image, but it just loses me. And also if I'm doing a talking head or piece to camera and I've tried to move, it will then lose me as well. So I'm not quite sure it's as good as it says it is. It is good. It does find you and it does hold on to you, but it does still miss. And when I'm setting myself up as well, I know other people as well have complained in relation to this. It's where it default sets you within the frame. So where I am here is that I'm on the top part of the frame, but when it does the face tracking, it brings you pretty much into center like this, which is not exactly the right way. Now, if you're close enough, or if you're far enough away rather, it's okay. But when you're doing close piece to camera, holding at arm's length, it can be quite a distraction. So again, there is a setting I know that you can go in, but you have to go in and then change where it sets you within the screen. But it should be able to do that, I think, in a better positioning, knowing where you are within the camera. And again, tracking, there is no tracking in slow-mo at 4K. Now, when the camera was first released, there was no tracking in slow-mo. So they have done a software upgrade to be able to fix that. But even right now, I can only get that in 2.7K. I don't understand why, if it's working at 2.7K, why can't it work at 4K? Now, if you want to be able to download the files, and like I said from the outset, the challenge in getting the uh, SD card in and out, you can connect this via USB-C to your computer, but you have to then turn on the unit to be able to download your files. Again, if it's plugged in, it has power going into it, it is recognizing that something is there. When I turn it on then, I have to make sure that it's standing up because the gimbal will kick into place. So it's a small extra thing that I have to do. It would be great if you could just plug it in and download your files directly to your computer. That way then, you don't have to worry about getting the uh, SD card in and out. Now at the beginning, there was talk as well in relation to overheating issues. Now I did some tests in relation to it. I was able to record up as far as 20 minutes at 4K and I did then get a warning, which was an overheating issue. It has never happened to me since, mainly because I haven't been recording for long periods of time. It's been a short piece to camera. But if I wanted to utilize this to record an interview or something like that, then I know that I would potentially have that issue. Now I can resolve it by dropping down the resolution and the frame rate, but again, you know, overheating on this unit here, it is something that you have to be aware of. It has happened. And I think that they should be able to fix that as well through software. And then the final kind of gripe that I have is in relation to the positioning where it is from um, hyperlapse, motion lapse, and time lapse. So by default, it has time lapse. But if you go into the Mimo app, you can then change it as well, much easier to be able to go into hyperlapse or motion time lapse. Now, I figured out that you have to swipe up in relation to it to be able to change that, but it wasn't necessarily always straightforward to be able to find that setting. So again, small and tiny changes, which I think will make this camera even better. So after nearly four months of using this camera, I still love it. It hasn't failed in me yet. I know that it has failed from others as well. I recorded this part, the first part of this video two days ago, and I noticed yesterday Thomas Heaton released a video saying that you shouldn't buy this camera, but in actual fact, you should buy two of these cameras because of the unreliability. If one fails, then at least you have a backup. He did say that the camera is great, and I agree that the camera is phenomenal. So it's not something that I'm saying it's a bad camera because it has been the camera of the year for 2023 and probably into 2024. But if DJI ever get to watch this, please try and make those changes because I think it will really elevate the camera as well to even further next level. So thank you very much as always for joining this episode. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd highly appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And if, it, if you want to watch another episode, I recommend this video here. And until the next time, Schlange Fall.